Hello, I'm Stuart Pym, and I want to talk to you about my modestly titled book, uh, The World According to Pym. I wrote this book because I wanted to know what we are doing to the planet, to uh, plagiarise John Kennedy, ask what not the planet does for you, but what you do to the planet. And in this global assessment, I have a whole variety of uh, detailed scientific sources on which I draw. But you know, one of them is almost certainly one that you have somewhere, probably in your kitchen where I keep mine. It's a cookbook. It's not just any cookbook, it is this enormous encyclopedia called The Joy of Cooking. And this particular version of The Joy of Cooking is written by Ethan Becker, who is the son of Marion Rombauer Becker, who is uh, the daughter of the uh, prodigious um, Irma Rombauer, who wrote the first edition of The Joy of Cooking. I have two of those editions, but not a first one, at least not yet. I keep looking for one. Now, you might think, what does this have to do with the state of our planet? If you have cookbooks, I'd like you to look at what kind of fish recipes that are in there. In the latest version of this, there are recipes for catfish, mm, tilapia, I dis buys tilapia, almost certainly there are very few recipes for cod and haddock. Now, <coughs> I grew up in the north of England, and cod and chips, actually haddock and chips, is very much my idea of comfort food. When things are bad, you know, there's nothing quite like, you know, a plate of fish and chips with malt vinegar. The first edition of Joy of Cooking has lots of recipes for uh, for cod and haddock and herring. The second edition tends to have recipes for uh, Patagonia toothfish and orange ruffy. And by the time of the third edition, all those fish have gone. The oceans are huge, are vast. And yet, despite their remoteness, we've managed to wipe out so many of the world's fish stocks begs the question then of just what impact the, the seven billion of us have on the planet. And the book's in three parts. First of all, I talk about the land. I talk about what we're doing to the world's forests, to the world's drylands, its grasslands. Uh, we talk about um, the, the various kinds of, of ecosystems on land and find that about 40% of all the planet's productivity, all the green stuff that the planet produces annually, um, is something that we consume. We consume it for food, we consume it for, for fiber, um, we consume it for wood. That's a big piece of what the planet does for us. And we're already consuming closing in on half of it as our population increases. The oceans, which seem so vast, are clearly not vast enough because we have eliminated most wild-caught fish um, from the oceans. You have to actually search hard in the fishmonger's slab to find fish that are wild-caught rather than farm-caught. And then the third idea is biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth, all creatures, great and small, if you like. And we are driving those species to extinction at an extraordinary rate. When Al Gore talks about species going extinct a thousand times faster than they should, he's quoting uh, my research. All of these questions beg um, issues of how we must manage our world 
um, as our population increases and particularly as our aspirations increase. There's no point in our just pointing our fingers at people in, in poorer countries and saying you're having too many children. Uh, the problem is that it's not just the fact that the world's human population is increasing. Uh, but it's those of us who live in rich countries want more and more and more. We want more things, better things, more expensive things. We have to address these issues. And we have to address these issues in an era of, of climate change, in an era of epidemics. Don't talk about the uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, I, it would have been surprising if I did because the book came out beforehand. But the reality is that we have seen pandemics affect us for more than 100 years. 100 years ago, it was Spanish flu. Uh, 40 years ago, it was HIV. In the last couple of years, it's been COVID. Uh, these are diseases that come from uh, going into nature and destroying forests and coming into contact with very close contact with species that carry of viruses that can harm us. Despite all this, I hope you'll find the book optimistic. I'm optimistic. Journalists often ask me, how do you get up in the morning? How do you face the world when you're the person that documents how much of it we're destroying? The reality is I do that uh, because the work I do as a professor at Duke, the work I do as a uh, a director of a non-profit called Saving Nature, I hope you will look at my Saving Nature website, um, tells me that there are many things that we can do as individuals uh, to make this beautiful planet of ours safe. I hope you will stay safe, and I do hope you'll enjoy my book. Thank you.